Jose Portillo, please. I want to commend you for uh, bringing awareness to the public of what is going on, um, what is being done, what is not being done by regulators in Maryland as far as um, foreclosures that were improperly carried out. Okay, not so fast. Let me explain this to you. The Shapiro and Burson case is proceeding on a parallel track, but in an opposite direction from the Thomas P. Dory case. Dory was sanctioned in court. Now he's going before the disciplinary committee and such. All right. Burson was disciplined and should now be facing censure before the court. Now, remember this guy, Jose Portillo? He's the whistleblower at Burson. Well, he wrote me recently, and I've been waiting to bring this out, but I'm waiting for the uh, rest of the 8,000 fraudulent documents that he has for me that were all signed off on, well, not really signed off on, by one of their attorneys, Savage, okay? Well, so there's the master's report and recommendation. You can see what happened there, and we're going to see what happens going, uh, you know, into the future with this case, because something has to happen, all right? Jose Portillo, please. Hi, it's Chris King with Mortgage Movies. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. How are you, Mr. King? I'm well. Uh, I'm just following up on our earlier conversation this evening uh, in which you were sharing with me some of your experiences as a, a paralegal with the uh, now defunct law firm of Shapiro and Burson. And uh, we left off with me in, in amazement at the fact that you have uh, 8,000 documents. Um, a couple of thousand deeds and several thousand affidavits that indeed uh, were purportedly signed by Attorney Savage, but which were <laughs> not really signed by Attorney Savage. Is that correct? Um, well, it's close to 8,000 documents. Um, it's like 7,749. So, um, yes, very close to 8,000 different documents. And, um, yes, um, they were supposedly signed by Attorney Savage at Japan Person and um, later uh, recorded with um, the, uh, the land records across all Maryland counties, all 24. Yes, indeed. I saw the spreadsheet you provided me on that, and I, as I understand it, Furthermore, you did uh, share this information with the disciplinary council and the special master. Is that correct? The, uh, uh, master Ritter. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, and as a result of some of this, I guess you expect, uh, it, it, and the, the fallout from this included uh, a lawsuit by the E&O firm, the Errors and Omissions Insurance Firm, for Shapiro and Burson, there was a lawsuit that was filed against Shapiro and Burson, then was there not? That's correct. Right, Westport Insurance Corporation. I'm sorry? Yeah, Westport Insurance Corporation. I have it pulled up here. I see it now. Right, Westport Insurance, once, I guess, they got wind or, um, of what was uh, actually going on at Shapiro and Burson, um, whether it was... Um, by reading in the news or seeing the reaction at, um, at Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae um, who dropped Jibran Burson from their um, designated counselors, attorney filed a lawsuit against Jibran Burson. Right. And you told me earlier that that, that lawsuit settled shortly after it became evident that you were willing to testify against your former employer. Now, my understanding is that the third person's attorneys representing the third person, um, they contested and they argued um, the claim Westport was um, was making against them uh, for, her, for about six months. Then um, Westport Insurance asked me if I was willing to um, to prove give a deposition as to what I witnessed 
during the time I worked for a superior person. Yes. And um, I, I agree to, um, to give my position to Westport um, attorneys. And um, I think two weeks later, Westport attorneys contacted me and told me that my position was um, no longer going to be necessary because a different person um, decided to settle. Yes, I see. Uh, very interesting. I have I do not um, think that as no, the catalyst in the decision of Japan Bursa and Westport settling right. out of court right. was uh, because of, of um, me you know, willing to testify or be uh, deposed. But the, uh, the fact that two weeks uh, later, after Shaper Burson found out that I was willing to uh, testify, you know, they, they opted to settle after um, contesting this, this suit for, for six months. Uh, seemed, seemed kind of you know, strange. Yes, I understand. I mean, well, like I say, uh, I don't want to get into a post hoc ergo propter hoc argument here, but, you know, the facts speak for themselves. Now, the other thing that I want to get into right now, uh, briefly, because I want to keep this under six or seven minutes, but I do want to touch on something that we're about to divulge now, which goes back to the 8,000 signatures and that you had provided, and uh, by way of the Thomas Dore decision that came down from Judge King in Baltimore Circuit Court last month, in which he was uh, lightly sanctioned for falsifying uh, signatures, uh, or ha rather having a signature signed without his knowledge, be it as it may. But uh, back to these other signatures, you know, the Shapiro and Burson have been reprimanded before the Disciplinary and Grievances Committee, but yet nothing has happened uh, with respect to uh, a censure by the courts. And we're also wondering what's going on you know, with the title of these of these the houses that were conveyed back to the banks, somewhat fraudulently, right. one might argue. Yeah, yeah. there are nearly two thousand deeds that were recorded uh, throughout Maryland, and uh, these deeds convey um, ownership from the homeowners that were foreclosed on by a different person, conveying title of ownership back to the banks. Um, now that um, the attorney at Chapman Burson has been reprimanded by the uh, Maryland Grievance Commission, uh, does, my question is, are these conveyances legal or, or are they um, nullified? I don't believe that they are. I take the position that they're not. And, and there could be a defect in title and, uh, you know, a cloud on title. There's all kinds of questions here that need to be addressed. In, in addition to the reprimand that they should be facing uh, in the circuit court. So that's the way I'm going to present it when I put the video up on this. And I, I appreciate your, your diligence in all of this. That I think you're doing the whole country a favor. Thank you. Now, how did you find me? Um, I actually um, found the, um, the Thomas uh, Door article. And from there, there was another link your website where you had your video and you had posted information um, on, on the Thomas Dore decision. I see. Um, that, that's how I found you. Okay, and I'm and, gl um, glad you did, yeah. One of the other questions I am no wondering about is, okay, Maryland Agreement Commission has reprimanded um, attorney at Japan person. Yes. Is that the extent of their actions and the case is closed or do they plan on um, following charges just like they did with uh, Thomas Dore? Yeah. I certainly hope so. Yeah, that's the question and, and we'll have to wait to, to see that uh, but I'm certainly going public with this now and I, I, uh, I hope that they do the right thing you know, and, and we'll see what happens. I know every time that I sign in or call the court you know, regarding uh, Thomas Dore I know that they um, they follow me. The court follows me, so I know that they they think there's something is important going on, and um, hopefully they they do the right thing. That's all I can say. Well, hopefully we can uh, bring attention and raise um, attention on these issues 
And um, me, personally, I want to come back to you. Do a great job. Good job. I thank you, sir, and likewise.